Hello everyone, I'm Matt Mitrich, the alternate historian. You know, alternate historians often try to be as plausible as possible, but sometimes they say, screw it, man, aliens. And why not? Alternate history has its roots in science fiction, and aliens are one of the most popular tropes in that genre. General science fiction, however, usually deals with humans interacting with extraterrestrials in the future or the present. Alternate history, on the other hand, has their perspectives firmly in the past. And since aliens seem to be a big deal these days, I decided, why not do my own personal top five favorite aliens of alternate history? Why top five? Because shut up, I don't have time for a top ten list. So let's begin. Number five, The Martians from H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds. In H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds, the Martians abandoned their dying homeworld and invaded Victorian England. The tripod war machines outgunned anything the British Empire could throw at them, and it seemed that nothing could stop them. Humanity was only saved because the Martians were not prepared to deal with Terran bacteria that humanity had long since grown immune to. Thus, humanity is saved not because of their intelligence or skill, but because of dumb luck. Yeah, I'm sort of cheating with this one, but Wells' Martians are one of the most iconic alien races in history. And because they are in public domain, they've even showed up in steampunk and alternate history works, like Alan Moore's The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, or Kevin J. Anderson's War of the Worlds Global Dispatches, which envisions how the rest of the world would have reacted to the Martian invasion. There is even an animated film featuring a machine gun packing Theodore Roosevelt fighting Martian war machines. How badass is that? So while not technically alternate history, the Martians have been incredibly influential in our favorite genre. Admittedly, ideas like Mars supporting life or machines with three legs making effective weapons seem silly now, but the Martians still represent humanity's earliest fear that life outside of Earth may not be entirely friendly. Number 4. The Takesians from George R.R. R. Martin's Wild Cards. In George R.R. R. Martin's shared superhero universe, an alien race known as the Kikisians develop a virus that is meant to enhance their own psionic powers. Worried about side effects, they decide to test it on Earth, but one of their own, who would come to be known as Dr. Tachyon, tries to stop them, but he fails. The virus is released over New York City in 1946, killing many, turning some into deformed jokers, and gave a lucky few superpowers, thus changing history forever. Martin and Crew's realistic take on superheroes and the tropes associated with that genre would of course have aliens, but what I like best about Tachyon and his people are how similar they are to humans. One might shrug this off as poor writing, but since many of the characters and stories in Wild Cards pay homage to others, I personally find Tachyon's to be a homage to the aliens of sci-fi movies and television shows of the 50s and 60s. You know the ones, right? The ones who obviously look human despite being called aliens? In those cases, filmmakers were hampered by poor budgets and bad special effects. Thus, we need to be told the actors were aliens, mostly due to their outrageous costumes. But they are still charming in their own way, just like the Tachesians. They may look like humans, eat like humans, talk like humans, drink like humans, and have sex like humans, but they're not. They're an advanced alien race of psionic powers. Don't you forget it. Number 3. The Lords of Creation from S.M. Sterling's, um, Lords of Creation. Yeah, kind of redundant, but I honestly don't know what to call these aliens. I even asked a Sterling fan group on Facebook to see if anyone there knew what their name was, and I didn't get an answer. Still, that doesn't mean I don't think they deserve a spot on this list. In Sterling's homage to planetary romances of Edgar Rice Burroughs, an unnamed alien race terraformed Venus and Mars in the distant past, and returned repeatedly to seed the planets with life from Earth. By the 20th century, humanity learns that Venus is a jungle world full of dinosaurs and primitive humans, while Mars is a desert planet home to a decadent human civilization that has mastered genetic engineering. This revelation kicks off an entirely different space race. And yet, I can't help but wonder who the hell are lords of creation? Why did they terraform Mars and Venus? And where did they go? Did they move on to other things, or did this arbitrarily advanced alien race get wiped out? It's easy just to miss them as alien space bats, and to be honest, that might be all they really are to the story, but that doesn't mean there isn't an epic space opera waiting to be told. Out of all of Sterling's universes that I wished he would return to, this is the one on top of my list. But we probably won't get that. So instead, go read Lords of Creation while it's still there, and read about how Martian sand ships are powered by squids. Yes, that is in that book. Man, that's some sterling is weird. Number two, the Asidi from Eric Flint's Asidi Shard series. The Asidi are the biggest douchebags in the universe. And no, I'm not joking. In Eric Flint's 1632, we learn in the introduction that the reason a West Virginia coal mining town was sent back in time to Germany in the midst of the Thirty Years' War was because an alien race known as the Asidi liked to use space-time in their art. Except playing around with the fabric of reality can have some unexpected side effects. They're eventually exterminated 85 million years later by a species descended from humanity who didn't even know they were once human. They just wanted the Asidi to stop screwing with the universe. The weird thing is, the Asidi played little to no part in the 1632 series or any other series set in the Asidi Shards multiverse. 
Except for a brief couple of paragraphs in 1632, we know nothing about them. I personally imagine them as being like Lovecraft's old ones, except without the competence. I've heard in a CD will appear in Eric Flint's forthcoming novel titled By Any Other Name, co-authored with Sarah Hoyt, so I might pick it up just to see if my theory is true. But yeah, the Acidi are cosmic scale douches, and I love them for it. But I love the next alien race even more. Number one, the race from Turtle Dove's World War series. Anyone who knows me well enough knows that I fell in love with alternate history after reading Harry Turtle Dove's World War in the Bounce, which introduced me to the race. For those who don't know, the race are lizard-like aliens hailing from Ta Seti, an incredibly old civilization with the capacity for interstellar travel. The race are nevertheless very slow and methodical when it comes to doing anything really, whether it's adopting a new piece of technology or whether to conquer a planet. Thus, when they send out a fleet traveling slower than the speed of light to conquer a planet they call Tosev, they expect to find an alien race that still fights primarily with spears and swords like the probe showed them. Instead, they discover that the species of Tosev, which calls themselves humans, are in the midst of their second world war. What I like best about the race is how believable they are. Except for interstellar travel, most of their technology has parallels with actual human tech from our own timeline. They have to learn human language rather than just using a writer's crutch like a universal translator. They also have to use the nuclear weapons they brought along sparingly because they need to keep the planet intact for the colonization fleet that is coming. Even the characters from the ranks of the race are fleshed out and developed. They can do acts of both good and evil. They can shake off the flaws of their culture or they can stubbornly cling to them, even as their goal of conquering another world for the Empire comes crumbling down. So yeah, the race are my favorite, but there are lots of aliens in alternate history if you know where to look. In case I missed your favorite, let me know in the comments. Well, that is all I have to say in this subject. If you like what I do, please comment, subscribe, share this video, support me on Patreon. I'm Matt Mitrovich, the alternate historian. Bye.